Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Welcome back, darlings. I'm Cognac Willa Lane, and we are here in Manhattan on one of the most glamorous streets in New York City. And we're here at one of the most glamorous, elegant Italian restaurants, the best Italian restaurant right here in New York City. It's called San Pietro, and it's located at 18 East 54th Street. And I'm here with the owner, and he is going to introduce himself to the camera. Hi, good evening. Um, welcome to San Pietro. Uh, my name is uh, Gerardo Bruno, and I uh, own San Pietro restaurant with my brother Cosimo. Cosimo, he's the chef. He's, uh, he's back in the kitchen yes, cooking. Yes, yes, he is. Now, tell my audience a little bit about this restaurant. What inspired you to open up this restaurant? Well, this, uh, uh, we opened uh, San Pietro in uh, June 1992. Um, the uh, inspiration uh, was to come to America first. And uh, then, you know, we, before we, we thought about opening our own restaurant, we worked with, for other restaurants here in the city. In uh, 1992, we had the possibility to open San Pietro, and uh, our aspiration was to bring uh, the real southern Italian food to New York City. And you've success successfully have done that. Am I correct in yes, asking? Yes, we've been uh, we, we've been uh, very lucky. Uh, God has been on our side, and we have developed um, a lot of success throughout uh, throughout all these years. And thanks uh, uh, also because uh, we all we always bring fresh ingredients from south of Italy. Uh, so we, this restaurant really is southern Italian southern, cuisine. Uh, southern Italian cuisine, yes. Yeah. Uh, southern Italian cuisine, for uh, some reason, was always misrepresented uh, here in the here in the in the United States of America. Um, so we, we... Why is that? Why is it misrepresented? I mean, most people think Northern Italian food is better, but it's really not. Well, it's, it's not... Uh, it's excellent Northern Italian food. It's just that it's a lot different from the Southern Italian uh, uh, cuisine. As you know, we were two independent countries, uh, countries uh, before 1871. So we have uh, we have a southern Italian accent uh, from uh, uh, various uh, Mediterranean cultures, and the northern has an accent of uh, of uh, uh, southern European, so from uh, mostly France, Austria, Switzerland, right, right. Germany. You know, our uh, our cuisine is based up more on. Uh, uh, day to day what's what's available in the what's available in the garden what's available at the butcher shop what's available at the fish market at the shore i at know because i'm italian yes. i'm american but I, my family is originally from sicily so oh, i know so you know what i'm talking yes, about of course i know, know. of course so we our, our cuisine is uh, does not have long preparations our cuisine each dish has mostly 15 20 minutes uh Preparation. We don't. We do. We don't use um, uh, we, the ingredients that we use is olive oil, garlic, oregano, basil, and extra virgin olive oil that we bring over from our farm back in Italy. You know, and um, 
uh, you can see the ingredients in the food, you can see the freshness, the freshness of the ingredient and, and the food itself. Also because we are, we are very attentive on how, how and when we use ingredients and uh, fish, meats and uh, uh, other, other things throughout. We, we go by the seasons, wherever the season is offering. That's how we, uh, we prepare our menus uh, for, for, the, for, for the day, for the week, and for the month. Now, I want you to tell my audience what we are looking here. We are looking at some amazing dishes. This, for instance, this looks really outstanding. Tell my audience, what are well, we looking at right here? Okay, so this is an Amalfi uh, specialty, Amalfi, uh, near where, where we come from. We are from Salerno. Uh, so this is uh, how uh, the yellowfin tuna was used, was uh, prepared uh, in the old days, uh, which is uh, a loin uh, a loin of uh, of tuna. Um, of course, the tuna has to go under uh, freeze in the freezer for at least a week, under 20 uh, degrees for a week, and then the uh, the tuna is brought back to its normal. Uh, status and is used to be seared on hot racks with, oh with herbs and crushed pepper. Fabulous. You know, but just seared on hot racks and then it's then it's then sliced and just eat it, eat it with a little salad on top, lemon, olive oil and uh, uh, but today we added a little black truffle to it and a little buffalo mozzarella. It sounds delicious. You oh know. my god. Now this dish, this looks very appetizing, very interesting. It's very. Uh, tell me, guys, what's involved okay, that, with that? Uh, that is uh, that is a Neapolitan style uh, sausage uh, with, made with pork, of course, and uh, is used uh, during the winter months from uh, uh, from January when we start to eat pork. Pork will be in season in the south of Italy, um, starting uh, late December, early January. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fre with the fre with the f with the fresh sausage, we just <clears throat> is boiled first, and then is seared and is served. Uh, you can serve it on, on a broccoli di rape. You can oh, serve. I love that broccoli. You can you can, uh, you can serve it with beans. Uh, That's how or, I like to eat it know, with beans. Or or with uh, cauliflowers and barley. You know, it's another uh, because barley delicious. is also uh, a popular. Um, a legume in the south of Italy, you know. Now, the last appetizer, the, the last signature appetizer looks, oh my God, it looks like I want to eat every single meatball right there. Okay. Tell my audience about the meatballs. Okay, so this is the most southern Italian uh, dish you ever want to find, you know. My husband still loves it to this day. <laughs> meatballs and spaghetti. So, so you know, and uh, and for uh, and for a lot of for a lot of people, you know, they think that meatballs is passe. Nobody eats meatballs anymore. But this is a uh, I do. This is how how everybody is still raised up in 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 the south, in the farms, in the rural area of of the south part of, of Italy. And this is one of the dishes that was brought back by the by the American troops when they left Italy after the World War II. You know, uh, but unfortunately, they they didn't make it uh, the way. Do you way. know the history behind the meatball? Why it was invented and who invented the meatball? Do you know the history behind that? Uh, not as uh, not exactly, but I know. But I know that uh, uh, the 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 meatball is, uh, um, you know, since the 17, 1800. Uh, it was was already on some of the uh, uh, kings and queens menu in the south mm -hmm. of Italy. So it's called in Italian. You say bupet. Bupet, yeah. My little bupet. Exactly, exactly, exactly. You know, th you know, this is uh, this is one of the dishes that I that I think um, is uh, not only a comfort uh, dish, but if it's done well, it can be. It can it, you can uh, adapt. Um, uh, you can adapt. It's very adaptable, you know, with any pasta you want to eat it, or alone, or with a tomato sauce, or with beans, or with a mushroom sauce. You know what, how I eat meatballs? Yeah. You're going to laugh, because I don't want to gain weight. 
I eat the meatballs with cauliflower rice. Oh, yes, that's wonderful too. It tastes delicious. Oh yes, it is delicious. You know, with that you can uh, you can uh, combine a nice. Uh, yes. Medium now body. tell us about you this know, wine. This know, is you, these are the wines that are appropriate you, for yeah. these particular dishes. Yeah, this is a wonderful wine uh, uh, made. Uh, comes from Tuscany. It's a it's a blend. It's a blend of mainly Sangiovese with a little uh, uh, Cabernet and Merlot. You know, it's, it's a medium soft, uh, dry red that um, goes goes well with uh, any meat or v vegetable appetizers. You know, and also you, uh, let's get a close up. Also, also, also this, also this this wine will go well with any white meat, uh, poultry if you if you like, uh, rabbit, and. Um, it can ad it's very adaptable. Now this yeah. is the red. This is the red. Yeah, and the white is. And uh, the white wine. Tell uh, us about uh, this uh, white this, wine. Uh, this is, you see, uh, this white wine comes. Uh, see, the Amalfi Coast has uh, this the Campania, my region where I come from, has uh, the coast of Amalfi, mm -hmm. and then there is a city in the middle which is very famous. You know, Salerno and Battipaglia are two very famous cities because uh, they hosted the landing of the American troops when they started to push up the Germans, you know. So after the coast of Amalfi finishes, there is Battipaglia, another city where the buffalo mozzarella comes from. Mm -hmm. And then we have the coast of uh, Cilento. coast of Cilento is uh, quite important because uh, is uh, in this area where the ancient Greeks mm -hmm. started to move into and where they created the first Greek city in Campania after, after Sicily. So uh, this is a Fiano. So we have Fiano in Avellino, south of Naples, but north of Naples, but also we have Fiano uh, in this coast called Cilento, you know, because the terrain is very favorable to this, um, to this, uh, to this varietal of uh, of grapes. Fascinating. And, and um, uh, this wine. Do you prefer this over the red, or uh, no? Well, you know, I'm a I'm a white wine and red wine drinker. So you <laughs> I drink like, them both. Yeah, I love them. I love them. Uh, I love I love these two wines both. And uh, I would say though that you know with uh, with the tuna. With the tuna carpaccio. That would be appropriate. I, yeah, I would, Let's I would get a close-up of this, too. So now that we've talked about the appetizers and the wine, the appropriate wines, tell my audience, what are the signature dishes for dining, for the main entree? What should okay. we... What, what's the best dish... Here at the restaurant. Okay. So, like I like I, like I mentioned to you before, you know, oh, our menu changes as the seasons change. Yeah. So we have. We're coming upon the yeah. spring now. Yeah. So, so, so in the spring we're going to have the uh, baby lamb, which is. Yes, I would think so. You know, which is. Uh, Do which you have is, that now? Uh, no, no. But next week we will have we will have the baby lamb. We serve it. Uh, uh, we serve it roasted with herbs. And, and and roasted vegetables around, and then, and then we can put a nice Barolo, mm -hmm. drink a nice Barolo with it. Or the baby lamb can be deboned and stuffed with prosciutto, sage, fontina oh, wow, cheese, or with, the, or with the asparagus, fava, and uh, fontina, and then roasted and served with his own gravy and few steamed vegetables around also. Uh, also what quite else? Easy. What's what can what, we what, eat right uh, now what tonight? Is, uh, what, what's a, what, what's a what good entree over, for tonight? What is uh, the best entree? Is entree is something that is always in season. Is is uh, one of them? Is, of course, is the uh, the uh, branzino, branzino baked in the sea salt crust, which is a very uh, very popular dish from uh, from the Mediterranean area. Branzino is uh, baked. In a sea salt crust, it starts with fresh herbs, lemon and lime. Once it's cooked, comes off, comes off the salt and the bone and served just with a, a, a drizzle of olive oil with steamed vegetables around. The branzino absorbs, absorbs the mineral of the salt, not the flavor of the, of the salt. So it's a natural 
flavor. It's, uh, it's, and then we have uh, among among the pasta that I want to recommend is all, which is always in season is the spaghetti with uh, with the fresh cherry tomato sauce. I think that's basil, what my husband's gonna get. You know, basil, basil, uh, and, uh, and 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 olive oil. Of course, there is other uh, other pasta that uh, I recommend: the Southern Italian style, uh, the large linguine with garlic and oil, capers, olives, salty anchovies with breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. They call linguine with uh, con la mollica. Excellent. Also, also we have another dish that uh, we love, and it's um, and that is called. Uh, Paccheri della Domenica. Paccheri della Domenica is a large uh, rigatoni, Neapolitan style rigatoni with a, with a ragu. You know, in the, in, in the old days, you know, farmers used to make a huge ragu on Sunday morning. Women used to work, get up early in the morning to make a ragu of, uh, in, in dialect it's called uh, utiano, means a large pot with all different meats. I know. I, and, my uh, my grandmother used to make things. With, uh, she used to make something with like that. that. You know, in a tomato sauce, cooked for hours. You know, for hours. So with maybe that will make it tender. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. So, so we have this packery that we serve with a ragu, ragu of uh, veal, lamb, and sausage and tomato and uh, 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 pecorino cheese. Outstanding. You know, that we have. What's uh, your favorite? You must have a favorite. I have the packery. Certainly, one of my favorite dish that I uh, eat. On Sunday, uh, the spaghetti, excellent. The um, uh, I I love the baby. I love the baby lamb. I love the branzino in the sea salt crust. I'm going to try uh, that branzino. Yeah. I think I'm going to try love, that. You're going to love. You're going to love it. And also, you know, uh, another dish that I that I love is the um, uh, this is uh, a chicken like very very um, southern. It's a chunks of chicken, white and dark meat. Garlic and oil, broccoli rape, and the uh, spicy cherry peppers. Sounds. You know, I can't. Wonderful. You're making me so hungry. I'm dying over here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are for this dish. I, I can't wait to dine on this exquisite cuisine. This is you know. the one of the most elegant restaurants here in New York City, and it. From what I understand, you won an award. Tell my audience about that. You oh, won an award oh, from Italy. Yeah, I think it's well, the you know, most authentic Italian restaurant. Yeah, we were awarded by the uh, uh, by the Italian government uh, as uh, as the most authentic Italian restaurant throughout the world outside of Italy, and also the best Italian wine list. I see. I, do, I yeah. took video of yeah. all of that back there. I took some yeah. video. It's pretty incredible, the wine list that you have. Now, this is such a beautiful restaurant. It's very elegant. It's very glamorous. We're here in one of the most glamorous streets in New York City. Are there many celebrities that walk in the door or people, notable individuals that come here to dine? Can we talk about any of those people? Well, I, uh, well you know, uh, the people, <laughs> well, listen, the people that they, they come over here, they, they come over here after, they still come here after 28 years is because we can keep, you know, our mouth shut about what, you know, who they are and who they come with. And, and, you know, I can talk about what they like to eat, you know, but, uh, you know, there is... Who was the most, can you tell us who was one of the most famous people that walked through the door here and dined? Can you tell us? You don't have to tell us what they ate. Well, listen, uh, uh, all the presidents... Versace, when he was alive, did he ever come in the restaurant, Versace? Uh, uh, yes, one time. He did one come here, wow! Yeah, one, one time. Versace really came yeah, in the restaurant? Yeah, one time. One time was uh, 1992 or 93. You know, I'm, he's northern Italian, though, right? Is it for no, some? Yeah, no, no. He lived in northern Italy, but he's from Calabria. Oh, he's from Cal he was from Calabria. <laughs> wow, Versace ate here. Do you remember what he dined on? Well, you know, the the higher, uh, like people like Versace, a very educated, very well mannered uh, person. Uh, you, is not is he, not someone that is going to eat. You know what? What is in, uh, what's on the menu, or what's in today is like like all the uh, Italian or European important people that they love food. They they make you 
They make, make you make the dish. Yes, I know. Are. Yeah, I know. I've seen it. I've you, seen you know. it. Would you make me this? And you said, of course. But, uh, you know, bef before I say yes, I got to make sure that I'm you capable. You the ingredients. In the, <laughs> yeah. That I understand what it means. You, know? <laughs> you got to yell it to your brother. <laughs> What's your brother's name again? Cosimo. Cosimo, make sure you get this ingredients. We got to make this for Versace. So tell me, darling, this dish is just amazing. This is this is the pasta that you have prepared for us. Explain to my audience, what is this all about? Well, this is uh, the pasta that uh, is, um, is very popular at the same time, uh, originates uh, the Southern Italian uh, cooking. You know, here we have the um, classic uh, pacchero, uh, Neapolitan style rigatoni, with a Sunday ragu. Sunday ragu. ragu. Sounds yes. like something my grandmother would have made. That's what it is, yes. We saw it with uh, veal, lamb, sausage, and uh, tomato, and pecorino wow. cheese. And what is this now? This is uh, a pretty uh, much uh, uh, Salerno style uh, bavette. It's a large uh, linguine with uh, prawns, a uh, little uh, uh, olive oil, garlic, and uh, uh, capers and breadcrumbs. Oh my God, it looks you so know? delicious. And this one this here. Is, uh, this is called uh, cacio e pepe, uh, it's tagliolini, homemade pasta always, Caglio, uh, tagliolini, cacio e pepe. This is a, a homemade pasta with a double zero a grounded flour, black peppercorn, and a pecorino. And, and, and this, this is, one, the last one, looks like a, it looks like a ravioli. This is, uh, uh, this is the ravioli, the classic uh, buffalo mozzarella ravioli with mushrooms, with porcini mushrooms, with a, uh, a sauce made of uh, uh, filetto di pomodoro, fresh filetto di pomodoro, oh my uh, God, just grounded, delicious. you know, like strained. Now you have to talk to me. You, you have had some of the most famous people here in the restaurant, it, amazing celebrities, movie stars, presidents, but you didn't tell me before, but you did have Sophia Loren and Gina Lola Brigida. Not at the same time. No, but <laughs> tell my audience, Sophia Loren, what does she like to dine on? What was her favorite dish here at the restaurant? The, uh, so, uh, at that time, uh, when she uh, Sophia Loren is a very simple uh, eater, you know. At that time, I think she had the roasted uh, sardines. For really appetite. roasted? Fresh, yeah, raw fresh sardines. Yeah, they're delicious. They're the best. Uh, they're also very healthy. They lower cholesterol. And is oh, a, she's intelligent. Uh, she knows about those things. Uh, that, how you think she stays in shape? You know, she's stunning. She knows. <laughs> she knows food. She knows food. You know, and then and and then then she had the classic uh, uh, branzino that we're going to serve oh, you. Oh, that's later. what yeah. I'm going to have. Yeah. See, yeah. Sophia's yeah. like me. Yeah. She wants yeah. to eat the fish. That's right. That's now. Right. Gina, what did, what did she dine? Gina Lola Bridget, what did she dine when she ate here? Gina Lola Bridget eats more, uh, um, like, likes more pasta. She, like, she, she had a pasta with the spaghetti, the classic spaghetti with the cherry tomatoes. And uh, she had a, a pounded veal, roasted with uh, seared veal with uh, fresh rosemary and aged vinegar. Which, Another classic dish. Yes, yes. That that is very thin, uh, non uh, and thin, tasty with a lot of flavor and no fat. Now tell my audience that funny story you told me about Sophia Loren. She said, "Young man, you're touching my leg." Tell us yeah. about that experience. Well, you know, it was very funny because you know we were uh, serving, um, we were dishing out the food on the table and. Um, I mean, casually. I mean, I didn't. I didn't mean it. I just, with my leg, as I was approaching the table, I, 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 I think I touched her leg, and and she stopped me right away, saying, "Hey, young man, you're touching my leg." <laughs> oh, she, oh my God! I was so embarrassed. I was, I, was, I was. I was very embarrassed, and I, I, I didn't want to think her. I only wanted her to yes. think that I was doing it on purpose, you know, and but she was very, she was very, very you fine must about have been it. Yeah. Just stunned when you oh, were yeah, just looked at. Tell my eyes, tell my eyes the truth. Who is who did you think was more beautiful, Sophia or Gina? Oh, I I, I think Sophia. I, Why Sophia? Why? Because, What's about uh, her that's so 
she's so exotic, so stunning, so sexy. What's about what makes her so beautiful? The, well, uh, what makes her so beautiful is is like the way she handles herself. Makes it sexier, makes her makes her look beautiful, makes it sound funny and very interesting. You know, to to talk to and have her as a friend if you're lucky. <laughs> Wow, Sophia Loren and Gina Lola Bridget right here. This guy served them both. Can you imagine two Italian movie stars that were globally famous, globally famous. You are a fascinating man, fascinating. Oh, thank you. More just... coming up right here at San Pietro Restaurant. Keep watching, darlings. Pink Champagne Kisses. Wonderful host. This is a gorgeous, glamorous, elegant restaurant. I can't wait to just dine and eat everything I'm seeing here and more some. Really, really beautiful, outstanding. You are an amazing host. Um, tell my audience, where can we go to learn more information about this restaurant? You have a website, right? Yes, at uh, uh, restaurantesanpietroatiahu.com. Most incredible decor here at the restaurant. Tell my audience about the decor here. You have some beautiful, um, this is really amazing what you have right behind the, us. Uh, the walls of, uh, of uh, these restaurants, they are decorated by uh, ceramic. Uh, ceramic tiles, right? Ceramic tiles, uh, they all divided, in, they all made out of several pieces. They come uh, from, uh, from Capri and the, uh, the artist who made uh, this this uh, this uh, mosaic, if you want to call it, is uh, his name is uh, Sergio Rubino. It's, uh, all these all these uh, ceramics were were in a in a villa in Capri. The, the new owner of the villa decided to get rid of it. And really. Yes. Oh my God! It's and stunning, so, stunning artwork. And so, uh, Mr. Rubino called called us and said, "I know you guys are, uh, have intention of opening a restaurant. Uh, next time you come to Italy, come and see what I have. You may you may like it." And and so we went and we loved it. Then we took it. Oh my God! It's one of the most stunning restaurants I've ever eaten. Well, this is really a, beautiful. This is the representation. Um, throughout the world of the restaurant of what uh, uh, the uh, Mediterranean, including the Amalfi Coast, looked like around uh, St. Peter's time, Jesus Christ's time. Um, and then we have uh, the three ships that uh, Cristoforo Colombo That's used. what my husband yeah. said. Those yeah. are the sh Yeah. The Piazza, what is it? The, uh, the, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. There you go, the Santa Maria. Well, you are a gracious host. Tell my host, my audience, one more time what the website is. Uh, San Pietro Ristorante at Yahoo.com. Gorgeous. Let's toast. Let's toast. Salute. Mm, delicious. Thank you so much, darling. Thank Give me you. a kiss. Mwah. Mwah. And we'll be back with more interviews right here at Cognac's Corner Magazine. Keep watching, darlings. Pink champagne kisses. Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardell. Well, now it's time for the Cognac Show. And the Cognac Fabulously dressed to impress One of a kind girl I was brought into this world Wrapped up in pearls I love to mingle Though my husband reminds me I'm not single I meet and greet Both the famous and the elite I ride in limousines 
was drinking the finest champagne Wearing fur, dazzling diamond jewelry A girl can't complain I live in upscale life Dining in the finest restaurants Eating the best caviar for free And no matter how much I eat cognac Ooh, ooh I said cognac Ooh, ooh, ooh This has been a Crybaby Productions, darlings